Hello, and welcome to lesson nine. If you've been learning along with me since lesson one, you've really learned quite a bit. Now it's time to move your fingers because we are taking all of our knowledge and diving into the actual playing of the piano. So that means the technique parts, the technical aspects, learning new music, practice tips, and learning how to express emotion at the piano. We'll continue to learn new music theory concepts, of course, but that won't be the number one focus anymore. And today for lesson nine, I'm offering you nine practice tips that will help polish up your pieces. So you learned all the notes and rhythms in your piece. Great first start, but you know that it's still not performance ready. It might not be quite up to tempo, or you're still figuring out how to shape the musical phrases, or you want to make it more fluid. Perhaps some of the rhythms feel ragged or disjointed, or maybe you're having a little trouble playing with your hands together. So now what? How can you most efficiently practice to make big progress? Well, in a word, engagement. How many of you practice from beginning to the end of your pieces every single time you practice? Oh, me, me. And then if you make a mistake somewhere in the middle, you go all the way back to the beginning and go to the end again. And do you always practice at the same tempo? Do you practice the same way every day? These are all examples of not staying engaged. And it would be like doing the same exact workout every single day. It might work for a while, but your body is just gonna get used to it and it's not gonna be beneficial for you anymore. So you gotta mix it up. Before we get into these practice ideas, I'd love to know what are your favorite practice techniques? What has worked well for you? It'd be great if you'd share it with all of us in the comments below. So I'm gonna use the harp song, which is from this Alfred adult piano course to demonstrate these practice tips. It's a pretty simple piece and I know a lot of you use that book, so hopefully some of you have played it before. So here's how the piece goes. One of the first things I like to do when practicing a piece is divide it into sections. So for this piece, I'd probably just make each line a section. But with longer pieces, you know, two, three, four, ten pages, you'll want to make your sections much larger. Now that we have our sections, let's go through the nine different ways to practice this piece. One, go backwards. Start in the last section and practice it many times until it feels comfortable and smooth. So by many times, it could be three or it could be 30 times. Then move to section three and practice that line and resist the temptation to also play section four after section three. Then practice section two and end with the first section. So how is this helpful? By not practicing from the beginning like we usually do, we're challenging our motor memory or our muscle memory and making ourselves focus in on what we're playing. Two, change the articulation. And you're still practicing in sections, so go in whatever order you'd like, just don't start with section one. If it's marked legato with a slur, practice it staccato, and if it's marked staccato, play it legato. In this case, since there are slurs, I'll play it staccato. And experimenting even more, I might practice with a not so staccato, otherwise known as a portato. Three change the rhythms and practice them by section. In the harp song, it's pretty much all even quarter notes. So try making the first note of each measure long, then the other notes short. Four, 
Then make the second note of the measure long and the other two short. Finally, hold the third note of the measure so it's the longest. This practice technique is especially good if you're trying to even out fast notes or increase the tempo. When I practice in different rhythms, I feel like I'm strengthening my weaker fingers and just increasing my finger independence in general. And I feel like I'm gaining so much more control because I'm forcing myself to play fast than pause. If you're trying to increase the speed of your playing, this is great because you can work on the speed of just a few notes at a time rather than try to play an entire section at a faster tempo. For example, if you're trying to increase the tempo of your scales, you might do alternate rhythms in four. Then, when you've gone through all the rhythmic variations and possibilities, play it straight or just normally a couple of times. And you'll find that your scales sound more even, you probably will be able to play faster, and just in general, it will be much more comfortable. So really try this technique, it's one of my absolute favorites. 4. Play left hand louder than your right hand, then switch it. Really exaggerate these dynamics. This is just forcing your mind to stay engaged since you're doing something differently. Also, you're working on your control. As a musician, you want to be able to hear something in your head, then replicate it on the piano using your hands, and that takes control. Five, play left hand staccato and then right hand legato, then switch. Six, play with your eyes closed. This tests your memory and keyboard geography, meaning how well can you feel your way around on the piano without looking. Seven, add words if there aren't any. This is great if you're trying to memorize something. I added words to uh, the first phrase of this Mozart sonata when I was in junior high, and I can still play it when I'm thinking of the words. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. Eight, improvise or play around. This is a great way to stay engaged and explore your musical voice while still practicing the piece. 
The book actually has a couple of suggestions at the bottom. Um, you can read here, play the third and fourth measures of each line one octave higher than written. And play the first and second measure of each line one octave lower than written. So you could do what they suggest, or maybe you could play the first two measures all the way up the piano. Or maybe you could play it backwards. Or what about playing both hands at the same time? You could even use these three notes in any order you like. Just create something. Experiment with the dynamics, experiment with the mood, tempo, all of that. And lastly, number nine, play it slowly for memory, if you're brave. Otherwise, just play it slowly while you're looking at the music. If you want to really know a piece well, you should be able to play it at all different tempos. So the harp song is marked moderately slow, so let's slow it down even more. Now this takes some effort to stay engaged at such a slow tempo, but it's great practice for your focus and to make sure that you consciously know what's going on in the music. Playing pieces at different tempos changes the way your fingers and muscles work, so it might temporarily confuse your hands, which trust me is a good thing. With all of these practice ideas, rehearse them until you can play it quite well. Then go back to playing it the normal way or as written, and it'll feel quite a bit easier to play. So those are nine ways to practice when you're not sure how to practice. If you have a longer piece than the harp song, don't feel like you have to practice every single section like this every single day. Maybe just to pick three or four of the hardest sections in the piece, the ones that you know you struggle with, and then play it through all the way. Practicing is both a left and a right brain activity. So stay creative in your practice and try to come up with games or challenges for yourself. So these nine suggestions are really just the tip of the iceberg. Again, if you have a favorite practice idea that has worked well for you in the past, please share it with all of us in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next week for lesson 10. Have a good one, guys. Bye.